All right, greetings from Las Vegas as we count down to the biggest spectacle in sports. Jack and Mariah in a push-up contest. Oh, that's coming up. And you know that little football game here in Las Vegas? Beat the Odds starts right now. From our Las Vegas studios, this is Beat the Odds, sponsored by Superbook Westgate Las Vegas. Welcome inside our Las Vegas studio. I'm Dave Hall. And I am the push-up queen, Mariah Janos. <laughs> it's true, Jack and I competed in the skills challenge. Jack was talking a lot of smack. As he tends to do. Now, we're going to show you who won at the end of the show, but here's a little taste of these two world-class athletes. I don't hit the short one because I want to touch down here. I move around. Keep going! I mean... Is that as good as it got? Yeah, uh, kind of. That That's like a highlight right there. Look at that. Oh, uh, boy. Just missed the anger, the frustration. <laughs> Neither of us can really keep it cool, All to, right. to be completely honest. Well, we're going to show you who won this epic competition at the end of the show. <laughs> also coming up on the show, Jack and Teddy will set the table for the title game, the historical trends, how to bet those props, and we're giving out some Beat the Odds awards today. And we've got a special guest out of Kansas City joining us to talk about one side of the game matchup, plus Brandon Marshall is back to break down the defense. I'm going to go pump out some more push-ups. Dave, enter team Jack and Teddy for me while I'm gone. I mean, Jack. My knees are skinned up. I hope it gets better than that. Hey, I look like Tua when I'm throwing the ball, though. Did you not notice that? I'm left-handed, hitting the target. I got bad drivers in the car. We did get through it, though, and a big weekend, big championship weekend in the rearview mirror, and a lot happened, right? No doubt about it. Uh, did you just blame the drivers? Were you missing the car? by? Uh, I should have planned out. I, I need you to go a little bit faster. He cut the route off a couple of different times. Uh -huh. So I was yelling at my receivers. I understand how the quarterbacks feel in this league. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy, uh, get us back on track, man. Absolutely. That's my job. Here, look. Let's start with how these two teams got here. Insanity last week in both championship games. Baltimore, what did they do? They abandoned the run. And, of course, they fumbled about the one-inch line, and then threw another interception in the end zone as well. KC gets the money in that one. And Detroit had San Fran on the ropes. That game was over, but it wasn't over. Detroit failing on fourth down, drop passes, and then a bizarre decision to run the football. Needing timeouts, clock ran out on Detroit's season. So San Fran, KC end up in the big game. Yeah, you know, Baltimore, we talked about the futures ticket that I had on them, and I tell you, they did everything they could to possibly lose. I mean, they, they didn't control the ball, fumble going into the end zone, but basically, if you wrote what we need to do to lose, that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, Casey gets no credit from you, too? Very little credit. None. I mean, listen, I mean, really? we're going to find out. If there's a switch, then we're going to find out if they because it feels like Kansas City has flipped a switch for sure. They're still not scoring points, mm -hmm. but they're doing enough. They've been there before, and they're from the top down. I mean, Andy Reid does not get enough credit for the, the way sure. that they're winning. They're averaging about seven points a game in the second half this year. And I know you're a big fan, but I mean, yep. that's going to have to change at least a little bit this week. But uh, yeah, the other one, uh, bad beat. Did you talk about the bad beat with the, the going forward on fourth down that turned it from a, a Detroit a cover to uh, to not not being a Detroit cover to a Detroit cover? late in the game, fourth downs become real irritating. We've talked about that before and when you're talking about covering numbers as well. Yeah, that was no fun for me with San Fran hey. minus seven yeah. in my pocket. Of course, we have the opener for the big game. The first bets, the other lines open here in Las Vegas, San Fran minus two or minus two and a half. The first bets came on Kansas City and we saw this line down to pick them in some spots and then we saw money coming for San Fran. So we're seeing minus two. That is rare. You don't often see the Super Bowl line move one way and then come right back the other way hmm. within 24 hours of the opener. Yeah, monster bets coming in on San Francisco. But as I think the books realize, Kansas City, an absolute gem of somebody that the public wants to bet on. I would expect money to continue moving that way as we get closer to the big game. Uh, Mahomes is an underdog. The way that they get it done, I mean, it's hard not to love what they're doing. And getting points, that's where a lot of the general public is going to end up. No. All right, coming up, we're going to dive into some of the props, you guys, mm -hmm. and some of the trends on that in the next segment. Well, with the game literally right here, Las Vegas sports books are expecting their biggest betting handle ever. Mariah is at the Superbook Westgate Las Vegas with more. 
Thanks, Dave. I'm here with EVP of Superbook Operations, Jay Cornegay. Jay, the lines for the big game were set once those conference championships came to a close. What kind of movement have you seen early on? Well, we opened San Francisco a two and a half point favorite, and right off the bat, we started seeing Kansas City money. Kansas City money drove the line all the way down to one, and it wasn't until that point we started seeing San Francisco money, which drove it right back up to two. So our current number is uh, San Francisco uh, minus two. Now, prop bets are a huge deal during this time. What advice do you have for bettors looking to get involved in the prop market? When you talk about the props, the sharps are always looking for value, perceived value. As far as the recreational players out there, I say bet with your heart. You know, whatever you feel interesting, whatever you think that uh, might be fun to watch. I know that the low risk, high reward scenario is very popular amongst the uh, recreational players, and there's nothing wrong with that because they paid off in the long run. Now, speaking of props, you guys do have a contest here at the Superbook. Can you talk about that a little bit? Our big game prop contest is very popular. It's really gained momentum over the last few years. Uh, we offer 30 different propositions for the contest. The contestant that picks the most right out of the 30 will be declared the winner. It's a $100 entry free. Contestants can have up to five entries. All right, sounds exciting. Maybe I'll get in on that too. Jay, thank you so much. Dave, we'll send it back to you in studio. And thanks to you too. Of course, there's so many ways to bet on the game, the teams, the points, the props. Teddy and Jack are gonna break down all the numbers. Plus, Brandon Marshall has played in two of these games. We're gonna get his perspective on what it's like these two weeks for the players. Before we head to break, San Francisco's 17-point comeback over Detroit tied the largest comeback win in NFC Championship game history. Which team did they tie? The answer, after the break. Beat the Odds is sponsored by Superbook Westgate Las Vegas. Back before the break, we asked you San Francisco's 17-point comeback over Detroit tied the largest comeback win in NFC Championship game history. Which team did they tie? The answer, the 2012-2013 NFC champion San Francisco team. They overcame a 17-point deficit on the road in Atlanta to advance to the big game. Well, back then, hosting any football game, let alone this game, was crazy talk here in Las Vegas. But here we are now, just one week away. Hey, scan that QR code. You'll land right on our website, BeatTheOddsTV.com. All right, let's bring in Brandon Marshall once again. Brandon, great to see you as always. Great to see you as well. You played in two of these games. Mm -hmm. What are these two weeks like? Like, as, I guess especially this week, uh, you, you know, days off, booking hotels, you got friends hitting you up. What's it, what's it like? Yeah, it's, it's exciting, and it can be distracting because, you know, it's a lot of family that want to come to the game, a lot of, you know, media, you know, everybody's hitting you up. You get attention from everybody, mm -hmm. literally, right? Right. So, you know, um, it's, it can be distracting, you know, especially when you get to the city, right? There's a lot going on. There's, there's events. There's, mm -hmm. you know, you get gifts. There's media, right? It's a lot going on. So, you know, we obviously did a better job locking in in San Francisco than we did in New York, you know, when we <laughs> played Seattle. But, uh, you know, it, it can be tough. Sure. Yeah, remember me? I'm your third cousin from your mom's. Yeah. <laughs> like, wait, what? Who are you? Exactly. Hey, let's dive into the two defenses. Hey, you're a linebacker. You, you appreciate this stuff. Uh, that Kansas City defense. What makes them so good? It's le they're legit, and the thing is, it's not like they have a boatload of talent. Obviously, Chris Jones is, you know, the premier talent on that defense, mm -hmm. but they play sound, right? They, they play their technique. They know exactly what they're doing. They're where they're supposed to be, and that's what keeps them sound. And the thing is, right, they've been only giving up around 14 points per game the last five games to San Francisco's 23. So that defense on the flip side is, has been completely out of the norm than what we're used to seeing from San Francisco. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. <clears throat> Excuse yeah. me. They really seem to be leaking oil. Oil. Um, what changed there? I mean, can they get it fixed quickly? Steve Wilkes changed. Because the thing is, they had Robert Salah, right? And then he went to New York. Then they had D'Amico Ryans, right. went to Houston. And Steve Wilkes, you know, he's kind of bounced around as coordinator in the, um, you know, in the NFL. And he hasn't really stuck. And my thing is, I don't think he's a good fit for that defense. Mm -hmm. Now, they have a lot of talent, so it's making it work. But right now, they're Swiss cheese. There's holes everywhere. That people can run on them. They can pass on them. So they're going to have to fix that, you know, going up against uh, Patrick Mahomes. As by far the best athlete on this show, uh, I don't know if you saw that Jack and Mariah are having a push-up challenge. Yeah, yeah. Who, who you got, Jack, Jack oh, or man, Mariah? Man, I'm sorry, Jack. I'm going to have to pick Mariah on that one. 
<laughs> He's yeah. off to the side laughing. Yeah. Uh, Brandon would beat all of us easily, probably by about 50. All right, Brandon, thank you, sir. Well, uh, speaking of the devil, here is Jack with more on betting all those props. Yeah, I think the minute we see Brandon doing a girl push-up competition, we know that things are way <laughs> off rails because that's not going to happen. There are no real winners in that, only losers, I think. So, uh, speaking of winners, let's try to figure out where the early money is going on these prop bets. Prop bets have been a big, real popular thing over the last few years, and there has been some early action on some of these. Some of the more popular ones are there on the screen, but you look at Brock Purdy over 11 and a half rushing yards, uh, Pacheco over his rushing total, Kelsey over his uh, yardage total, um, also Kelsey on receiving. Receptions. It's gone up from five and a half up to six and a half, and you're actually laying in that number. People are going with what got them there. These key players that they know they should be able to expect production from. That's where this early prop money's uh, been coming in. Of course, McCaffrey, who's a major, major part of what San Francisco wants to do, his rushing yards over as well. Go ahead and look at the last few games on a few of these. You're not going to see all of these hitting. Kelsey has been hitting on a regular basis. A championship game, he had 11 uh, receptions, and really they've worked him in. That might be a good one to look at. Uh, but, yeah, when you look a little bit further, you've got teams. What I try to do is I on these prop bets, I try to look at one thing that I think is going to happen and then make two or three bets based on that. So San Francisco, number one in the league at scoring in the second half. Kansas City not scoring points in the second half, under eight points per game. So if you're looking at just that one stat and you think that will personality will play out, you go under in the second half, maybe San Francisco to win the second half, and on the opposite side of that, Kansas City to win the first half because that's where they're doing most of their damage, and then San Francisco mm -hmm. having to come back. So you can take one or two little stats we've seen all year and make a little money on them in this big game. And that's exactly what we saw last week. KC, yep. big first half. San Francisco, big second half. It's so. like a horse race, right? I mean, you've got closers, you've got front runners. Kansas City's turned into a front runner that then uh, goes conservative. San Francisco, we've seen problems with their defense. Brandon was talking about and then having to come from behind. They've shown they can do that. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, if you notice the props that Jack was talking about, all overs, they're taking the early <laughs> action. So there may be some value on unders when we get to kickoff. We talk about historical trends for the big game. And, look. Dogs have been cashing. It's been an underdog event in recent years. 12 and 4 in the last 16. 16 and 6 in the last 22. Dogs have cashed the big game. The straight up winner, 46 and 7 against the spread with some pushes. So it tells you when you're back in the dog, maybe you take some money line as well. The team that covers tends to win. And of course, 56 games with a posted total. 28 overs, 27 unders, and one push. No historical trends there <laughs> whatsoever. Coin toss also 9-9 nine and nine the last 18 heads and tails, so you don't want to jump out on that. As I lose a coin toss every year. You <laughs> That's got hard to do. 50-50 shot, and somehow I miss it every year. All right, thanks, guys. Well, this is going to be fun. Up next, we are going to be handing out some awards, <clears throat> including the best point spread teams and the biggest disasters. Uh, looking at you, Chicago. <laughs> Before we take another time out with 11 catches, 116 yards, and a touchdown on championship weekend, Kansas City tight end Travis Kelsey moved into first place on the all-time playoff receptions list. He remains in second place for all-time playoff yards and playoff touchdowns. Who does he trail? The answer after the break. You're watching Beat the Odds, sponsored by Superbook Westgate Las Vegas. Welcome back. Before the break, we asked you with 11 catches, 116 yards, and a touchdown on championship weekend, Kansas City tight end Travis Kelsey moved into first place on the all-time playoff receptions list. He remains in second place for all-time playoff yards and playoff touchdowns. Who does he trail? The answer, it is still Jerry Rice. He's about 400 receiving yards shy of Rice and three receiving touchdowns short. We still have another week until the big game, but it's imperative to get as much inside knowledge as possible before placing any wagers on the game. So it is my pleasure to bring in Scott Reese, who joins us from Kansas City. Scott, thanks so much for hopping on. This season, it took a minute for the KC offense to find its rhythm without Tyreek Hill and Eric Bieniemy leading the charge. Where do you think the turning point was where they began to look like the team we've been used to seeing the past few seasons? You know, it's funny, and it's probably the most unlikely turning point you can come up with, but it was week 18, the only truly meaningless week of the season for this, this Kansas City team, uh, because they rested a lot of their starters, 
And I think that you have seen the offense come back with that extra week with more juice and closely resembling the offense that we saw last season. And we all know how that wound up. How have you seen Steve Spagnuolo transform the group into the game changers that they've really become? Spags, to me, he was the MVP of the Baltimore game. Mm -hmm. uh, and you saw it. The players know it. I mean, you, you, the players wore those shirts both in pregame and they had them under their uniforms in Spags We Trust, which, by the way, they're now blowing up on the Internet. Uh, that game plan that Kansas City had in Baltimore was phenomenal. The execution was phenomenal. I'm talking about the defensive game plan. They blitz the bejeebers out of Lamar Jackson. I've never seen this Kansas City group blitz as much as they did in the first half of that game. So huge props to Spags. Yeah, it's been incredible to watch. Now looking at the matchup against San Francisco, what does Kansas City need to do in order to add another title to their cap? Stop the run. And that's been the mantra the last few weeks, but a little different because in Buffalo it was stop the quarterback running. In Baltimore it was stop the quarterback running and I think they did both of those things particularly last week uh, here it's just stop the running back Christian McCaffrey to me with all due respect to Brock Purdy in the passing game is the focal point of everything you cannot shut him down it's virtually impossible but if you can hold Christian McCaffrey to a reasonable mortal kind of game <laughs> as opposed to a fantastic do whatever he wants to do both running the ball and, and catching the ball out of the backfield kind of game I think that's gonna that's gonna go a long way so that's that's the Kansas City game plan for me is stop the run and throw it early and often on offense. You got it covered on both sides of the ball. Scott, thank you so much for your time. We can't wait to see how this one plays out. No problem. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, should we be wearing tuxedos or something? We're handing out awards. It's our Beat the Odds Awards. Uh, Teddy, get us started with the first show award. Sure, let's talk about point spread awards because we're talking about point spread. It's a betting show. Point spread team of the year, no question. Detroit, 12 and 5 against the spread in the regular season, 2 and 1 in the postseason. That's 70% for the full year. Honorable mention? Well, Cleveland, Tampa, Las Vegas, all with strong, positive results for their backers. We look at the point spread disaster team of the year. That's kind of a three way tie. <laughs> Atlanta, Carolina, and the LA Bolts, all failed repeatedly to cover the number all finished 33 percent or lower against the spread honorable mention we got to put philly in here philly closes out the season 07 and 1 ats their last eight games their last Oof. point spread cover came before thanksgiving we talk about games point spread disaster of the year and i was really debating what it should be but chicago minus three versus denver stood out because chicago had a three touchdown lead late third quarter and didn't cover the number. That's a pretty tough beat. But of course, honorable mention, yeah, Tampa missing that two-point conversion against Detroit in a game that, in many ways, they were the better of the two teams. Failed to cover plus six and a half. Yeah, I remember that. And of course, totals, Jack. Yeah, well, and I, before we leave that, I think it's important we're doing these year-end reviews to look at the information we would look at preseason, and then how would we have applied that? I mean, some of the numbers you talked about with covering the number Tampa and even Detroit, those are not teams preseason that you would say, they're going to make me a lot of money. And so I think it's important going forward to remember that just because the perception of how teams are going to be uh, versus the number during the year doesn't always work out that way, and the total is very, very similar. When you think lots of points, fun and gun, best show on turf you're not thinking Cleveland you're not thinking Detroit you're not thinking Indy Washington all of those over 60 percent to the over this year you think more teams like Kansas City they're actually in the bottom of this going under the vast majority of the time almost 70 percent and then Tennessee New England and the New York G-Men those are teams you might associate with unders but overall you've got to be careful just saying this team is supposed to do this so I think that's going to happen let's go ahead and bet that during the year so remember this when we go into next year that a lot of these teams you expect to do well with the totals going over and covering the number won't necessarily get you there talking about bottom lines. Yeah, you've been riding KC and under all season. We're going to buy a new car or a jet or something <laughs> afterwards, but we're rolling it into the big one. <laughs> or we're going broke. One of the team. <laughs> Up next, hey, we have two bonus awards, the best and worst prediction made on this show. Uh -oh. Plus, it's the video Jack's been dreading. Jack and Mariah battling in a skills challenge. That's a... I look good. That's something, all right. <laughs> See who won next. That's our stretching.
All right, welcome back to Beat the Odds. So we have two bonus awards to hand out. The best and worst prediction made on this show. For the best prediction, we go back to last year's big game where Teddy nailed it. Teddy, big game, what do you got? Let's call it KC 27, Philly 21. I like KC to win. Crushed it, Teddy. Great job. Mariah, you now have the worst prediction made on the show. Yeah, and of course it was Jack bragging <laughs> that he could easily kick a 25-yard field goal. Let's go. Got Jack here. Number one, field goal kicker. Let's roll. <laughs> I mean... He sent about five of these videos. Didn't this, make a single one. This whole Hold thing's the hamstring, though. Kansas City bias for sure. I'm 15 and six on my best bets. I figure that might get it done. Yeah, but you no, you the put... officiating every time. We're not done with you. As if that's not embarrassing enough, Jack challenged Mariah to our version of the skills challenge. So let's see how that one. This went. looks better, I think. That hot yoga is paying off. Yeah, seriously. All right, Mariah, moving target. Let's go. Watch the, watch the ball work. Watch the ball. Watch the footwork. Watch the footwork. Now we hit it. I'm burning. I'm burning. I'm burning. Mariah's the queen of push ups. Punch. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's what I'm talking about. Fun fundamentals. That's good. That's good. That's good. Are we making the trouble? Probably not. Are we better than most people probably thought? Yeah. How about this for a souvenir? Until next year. All the marbles right here. What I learned is that the editors around here are next level good. That's a total <laughs> smear job. That's not how things happen, but whatever. I'll, I'll relinquish till next year. I think we're both just terrible. <laughs> we're not in our wheelhouse for sure, but next week we have a lot of good information for sure, right? Indeed. Make sure to stick around for Beat the Odds next week as we'll get you ready for the game right here in Las Vegas. We'll see you guys then. Mariah, plus 130. <laughs>